What is going on everyone? Tim from Tierfon Orbital. Today I would like to talk a little bit about an install that I completed on a Dennis Lukanoff creepy uncle. I'm smiling because uh, there have been plenty of creepy uncle jokes during the install of this particular hilt. Uh, but yeah, it was a, I have heard, I've heard that this is a difficult hilt to install. Uh, this was actually the first time that I've installed a creepy uncle. Um, and the rumors that I heard prior to doing this were true. This was a little bit of a challenge. Um, typically with hilts like this, right, where we've got a control box down low, like the, uh, the mom is like this, um, it's, it's not only difficult to wire up your switches and the LEDs for these arrows, uh, but you've also got to make sure that you've got a chassis system that works, right? Like, so there are different options for getting this control box to talk or be wired up to that main chassis. You can do it with some spring connectors. Uh, I chose to go with a static chassis in this one. The other big challenge was with this was the fact that it did not have a helper board. So the helper board is basically a PCB that sits in this control box and it's got onboard tactile switches for, for this like toggle switches here. And it also has onboard LEDs. I did not have that for this install. So I had to uh, manufacture and design a solution for that. And essentially what that looked like was just a very simple uh, 3D printed block that I could hold, house some LEDs and very, very small micro tactile switches in. The, this switch mechanism is, is not a very uh, elegant <laughs> switch mechanism. It's essentially just a, a plastic, it's essentially just a plastic rectangle that pivots on a very, very small steel rod. So it was just, there's like a, a lot going on in here uh, and having to uh, figure out a way to make it work without the helper board was a little bit of a challenge. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward design. Uh, static internal battery. Uh, we've got a charge port and data port through a USB, uh, female USB port uh, in the upper upper section of the chassis. And that's where our kill switch is. And I also put an OLED in this build as well. So anyhow, with all of that out of the way, let's come into Fusion and talk a little bit about the chassis. And then we'll come up top and do a demo, right? So let's come in Fusion. All right, so here it is. Relatively simple chassis system, right? So the battery and the board do live in this lower section of the chassis. I put some light greebly work on this because it looked a little plain to me, but you'll never see any of this stuff, right? Because this part of the chassis just lives in the hilt. I've got an indentation here for the USB-C charging module, right? So that lives in here. Uh, around the other side is where I bring my leads out through uh, for that control box, right? So I've got some leads for the LEDs and the switches. Around back is our battery, obviously. So up top here, this is the section of the chassis that you will see, right? So when you unscrew the heat sink or the grenade section of the hilt uh, to get at your charge port and your kill switch, this is what you will see. So I did do some greebly work along both sides of this. This is a very, very skinny uh, section of the chassis, right? Uh, but I did do some light greebly work. I put an OLED in here as well, okay? The reason that I designed it to have this, uh, this section marry up into the lower part of the chassis is because of that USB-C port, right? So there was no way I'd be able to get that into the chassis uh, because of how this particular USB-C port is designed, right? So this is a very low profile USB-C port. I believe this is from stock, uh, but it's got a, a thick PCB at the back of it. So I wasn't able to kind of wire it up and, and stick it in a hole like I usually do. I had to modify this a little bit, right? So the USB-C port was wired up and glued in place here. And then this, this entire section uh, was glued in place after I wire up my PCB emitter, obviously. And that's it, right? Relatively simple chassis, so let's come up top. All right, so here we are. This is the Creepy Uncle from Dennis Lukanoff. Very, very beautiful hilt. I mean, this is a good looking hilt, don't get me wrong. It was not a lot of fun to install, uh, but it is a nice looking hilt, okay? So, like I mentioned, we've got our battery and our board that live in this section of the hilt. This lower pommel will unscrew, but you don't need to remove any of that to use the hilt, right? To get at your kill switch, 
and your charge port, you want to just unscrew the upper section of the hilt. And there is that chassis, right? The upper part of the chassis. So here's your USB-C port. This is how you charge your battery as well as get to your board to upload new configs, etc. Here is your kill switch and that's it. OLED's around back. So hit your kill switch. So there we've got our lit arrows. So these were not, I mean, like I said, this control box was not a lot of fun, right? So there are, there's a red LED in here and a white LED, uh, and they are separate in the configs. I've just set them up to animate, uh, like, you know, how, how Luke's arrows animate. Okay. So I set the OLED up with a few different boot animations. Right, some of them differently uh, are different when you ignite the blade. Right, so like I mentioned, this is where you get this is where you charge your battery, and is also how you get to your board. So one thing I do want to mention, right, to you, the customer, if you are uploading your config or uploading data through this USB-C port, make sure you are ejecting it when you are finished. Don't just uh, don't just pull out your USB cord from your PC. Make sure you're ejecting it. Some of you old school Windows users will know what I'm talking about. Uh, I have found that if you just yank this cord out when you're done, it can cause corruption issues with the SD card. And if that happens, you'll have to unwire this entire control box, pull the chassis out and reformat the SD card. I'm not saying it will happen. I have seen it happened seldomly before, but just to make sure I am doing things correctly, I eject the USB drive um, when I'm done using it, right? So you just right click it on your Windows machine and um, click eject, and that's it, right? Let me get in frame here. So that's it. Very, very simple setup. Oops. So once you get it, once you get it turned on, right? You want to thread on the upper part of their hilt, and you're ready to go. All right, let's come down to the bottom. All right, so hopefully that made sense when I was talking about that USB-C port, right? Um, I just I have it's it's happened to me before um, on my mom hilt actually. So I set up my mom. I set up my mom with the same setup and one day I was uploading my config and it corrupted the SD card uh, and I could no longer uh, do data transfer correctly, right? So I had to pull the SD card and reformat it. So just something to keep in mind. Um, I don't think it happens as often with Profi V3 as it does with V2. So who knows, right? Who knows why? It's a good sounding hilt. So I just set this up with a basic Profi font package. One more. What is it? Father, light, and There's that control box. Yeah, I mean, this is a no brainer, like, right? Like, one of my favorite aspects of this hilt as well as the mom is are those arrows like we've got to have those lit right all right so i am not going to put a blade in this unfortunately uh, i do not have my recessed blade with me currently right so this is a to the customer this is a recessed blade setup, right? Um, typically with thin necks like this, you wanna have a recessed blade because we've got such a shallow emitter here, right? Uh, I I don't have my uh, recessed blade with me right now. Right? But there's our lit emitter. And that's it, right? one more. I'm never touching that thing again. All right, so that's it. Nice, simple, quick rundown on the crimp, crimpy. Oh, for fuck's sake. So that's it. That is the creepy uncle from Dennis Lukanoff. Prior to doing this install, I had heard that this was a difficult one to work on. Really, the most difficult part about this install was getting that control box to work correctly, right? So other than that, I'm pretty happy with the install. To the customer, thank you very much for your patience and 
trusting me with your hilt. If anyone has any questions about this particular build or anything really, please do not be a stranger. And with that being said, may the force be with you always. Have a good one, everybody.